Uh, given the um, extraordinary response of the Coast Guard to the hurricanes, I would expect that this year's metrics are not going to meet what was anticipated. Uh, and unintended or unanticipated events uh, will undoubtedly modify those metrics. And so in the reporting to us and to the GAO, uh, how can this be taken into account by simply noting that you know, we had 2,000 personnel that were doing things other than chasing drugs in the Caribbean. They were chasing survivors. And does that work? Does that fit for the GAO and how you might respond? So you very accurately identified the opportunity cost to the to the organization associated with uh, with with the uh, responses this summer. Um, how those are accounted for and the impacts on, on the performance metrics and measures will be part of the, the operational planning process and in, in, in our um, you know, internal uh, look, the repeatable, reliable process. I, I am not an expert on how we will do that bookkeeping, but I would expect yep. that there will be some, uh, some adjustment that reflects the, the significant level of effort yes. uh, expended by, uh, by by boats and assets and, and cutters against the, uh, the disasters this past summer. And, and I suppose, GAO, as you do your reviews, you take this into, take these things into account? A absolutely. Our October 2017 report that did focus on the goals and the reasons for unmet goals did highlight, yeah. I think, seven case studies where we took a look at performance goals that kind of crossed yeah. a variety of missions, and we, it, we unpacked um, some of the meetings that uh, some of the me uh, meaning behind why goals weren't met. Um, we just like to point out, though, that your question does underscore something very important about the, the handful of reports that we've used to, to backstop this testimony statement, and that is, you know, good data is needed for good allocation of assets. And we've pointed out several times where there is a bit of a mismatch between the actual use and the assumed use of a handful of assets, which could limit the ability of the Coast Guard to surge. So bringing this back to our central message, the better data that are available on actual asset use will provide a clearer picture for the Coast Guard to then reallocate when there are unanticipated events. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one of the uh, results of the hurricanes was a significant loss of uh, property assets, Coast Guard assets, and uh, we have approved a budget for the replacement of those assets uh, or the in replacement improvements and whatever other maintenance might be required to the tune, I think, of something less than a billion dollars. Uh, here's where I want to go with this question is, and I'm going to use this for the other programs of record that are out there. And that is that it's important to me and I believe to this committee that we have a continuing update, uh, not every month, not every, perhaps not every uh, other month, but maybe on a six month cycle on the progress of these major programs. Uh, Mr. Uh, Graves spoke at length on things that are really not his turf, that is our turf, my turf, Chairman's turf, we call that our icebreakers, not Graves' icebreakers. <laughs> but uh, we'll get over that, and we'll deal with that personally here. But, the, uh, but he raises a very, very important point. What is the progress? How is it going? Uh, what problems have you uh, encountered uh, in the uh, design, the money, uh, the uh, contracting, and the like? And then carrying on to the other light icebreakers, other heavies and other lights. We need to know that. And so for all of the major prog programs that you have underway, uh, the offshore patrol cutters, the other various capital uh, programs that you have, and now the follow-up on the um, hurricane repairs, uh, these are important things for us to keep track of uh, for two reasons. One, we may want to modify the program of record, uh, or we may want to cancel or augment. And we can't do that unless we know where you are in the process. Now, I understand you do this, period you do this occasionally, 
but not in a periodic way. So that, uh, say, every six months, where are you with the, uh, uh, res I think it's fast response cutters that are built in Mr. Graves' district? Where are you with the uh, offshore patrol? All of those things. Where are you periodically along the line so that we can say, oh my, there's a problem that comes about for whatever reason. And then we can address it or, or not, or encourage you to address it. Is that a sensible way for us to keep track of where we are in these programs that we have laid out for the Coast Guard to do? And can you do it? We, we very much do what you've described with regard to program management and oversight of our, of our major acquisitions, um, you know, any, any one of which you've named. It's, it's a, uh, it is a regular, recurring, uh, very senior, senior leadership-driven uh, review. Uh, we are responsible to, uh, to, to DHS as well. And so the, so the process is there and the extent that uh, we, can share, we can and should share information with, uh, with our, our overseers, I'm, I'm confident we've got a, uh, a well-developed, uh, ongoing process with regard to uh, ensuring that we are uh, re responsibly and transparently and, and reliably uh, spending the, the resources that are generously allocated to so it. So internally it's being done yes, on sir. these major programs. And, and I suppose on the other, well, the 11 specific tasks that you're um, required to carry out, search, rescue, so on and so forth, drug interdiction and the like. Um, I'm going to work with the chairman and see if there's some way that we could receive it, just a periodic review of that. Much of the GAO report appears to me to be one of setting up systems of metrics so that the Coast Guard knows where it is on all of these tasks that it has to do, that there's a, a methodology of reporting so many uh, uh, sailors doing, excuse me, so many Coasties doing whatever they're supposed to be doing, so much drug interdiction, so much uh, work on boating accidents and so forth. And that seems to me to be useful internally for the Coast Guard to keep track of where it is and what it's supposed to be doing. For us, we have somewhat different task. We gotta, we'll be looking at the larger picture, uh, reviewing uh, particularly where the big money is going, uh, where the big tasks are going, and if we can set up some sort of a a uh, repetitious, uh, not every month, maybe every six months, but certainly no more than every, no less than every year, where we are reviewing, okay, where are you on the icebreakers? Uh, which probably will be like once every other month because of the way in which it is now gearing up. Anyway, that's kind of where I'm coming from, and I'd like to see if we have some way we can keep track of that. Right now, it's hit and miss depending upon when we are able to call a hearing. And maybe we're asking for it, maybe we're not. But just as a, as, as a way of keeping track of where we are on these major programs would be useful as I look at what the Coast Guard is responsible to do. With regard to the annual budgeting and so forth, I understand OMB and I understand all the games that you have to play there and I understand that you really don't control your budget and that the Homeland uh, Department of Homeland Security is probably ripping your budget off to build something, maybe a wall, I don't know. But uh, whatever, um, we understand you don't control all of that. We can if we have knowledge and information. So thank you. I'll, I'll let it hang out there. Thank the gentleman. I'm just going to 